Good evening, everybody, and welcome to playoff time here in the Philadelphia Catholic League. It's Archbishop Carroll, the seven seed, and the host here tonight against the ten seed Bonner Prendergast, the Friars, in a battle to get to the quarterfinal round. Let's bring you now inside our broadcast booth, Bob Long, and we have the legend with us, Huck Palmer, is with us to do some color commentary this evening. And I guess we'll let everybody in on a little secret. This won't be the last time this Philadelphia Catholic League postseason that we'll be working together. So we're excited to have you alongside. You've seen more Catholic League basketball than anybody, Huck. What is going to be special about tonight? Well, these two teams played a terrific game during the regular season about a month ago, a 66-62 final at Cal 1 here on this court. Um, they were without Luca Falsa that night, but it was an up-and-down game. Um, some really good performances. Ian Williams scored in 27 that night. Uh, uh, Deuce Kettner had 25 and 15 rebounds. And I believe his, uh, his partner in crime over there, uh, Kevin Rucker, also had a, a 20 spot in that game. So these teams are pretty evenly matched. They, they're similar in some ways and, and different in another. They're, they're, they're different in the fact that Bonner plays a lot of seniors, right? They start four seniors and a junior, um, whereas Carroll, uh, pretty unique to the Catholic League, has a nine-man roster. Uh, all sophomores are below. Start two freshmen, three sophomores. They, they actually have, over for the uh, overall in the season, they have five guys averaging double, double figures, which I don't know if it's ever been done before uh, in, in the Catholic League or anywhere with sophomores or below. Yeah, it's really incredible. And the one that really leads the charge and in some ways turned around this Archbishop Carroll season is Ian Williams, who came in onto the scene last year as a freshman. Go back to mid-January, Archbishop Carroll was 0-3 in the league, Huck. They were hosting a game against LaSalle at all places, Chestnut Hill College, because there was a big storm that came through and took up power here in the school for about a week. They were down two points in the final five seconds, and Ian Williams hit a double clutch off balance three to win that game. All they've done since then is go 8-2 and two and earn themselves a home playoff game. It's been really impressive. Yes, and they were really impressive the other night at uh, their last game of the regular season for them against Father Judge with a 21-point win. Um, they were very impressive that night. Uh, when they're going well, they got all five guys can score between 10 and 15 points. They share the ball pretty good defensively, um, and, and they, they play an exciting brand of basketball. They do, and, and Bonner Prendergast on the other end, coached by Billy Cassidy. He's done a great job with this club. They had some transfers come in a couple of years ago. They were ineligible for PIAA playoffs last year. But now everybody seems healthy. Everybody is experienced. They've played big games before. A couple of them were transfers from Chester when they went to the state semifinal a couple of years ago. And so this should be a really, really good matchup. Two teams with different styles. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back for tip off here on Bob Long Sports. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation. Our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did.
They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. Time to meet the starters here tonight. It's the playoffs, and it does not get bigger than this here in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Bonner Prendergast. Being introduced first, Kevin Rucker. Rucker has size, length, plays at that wing position, can get to the hoop, can knock him down. Knock him down. How about number one, Reggie Selden, one of the better three-point shooters in the Catholic League. Certainly a volume perspective. When he gets hot, nobody better. Kyrie Womack, true point guard, averages six and a half points per contest. And then the big man, Deuce Kettner, averaging 18 points per game to pace the Friars this year. And then Kenny Gatling also provides size in the front court. Huck, it's a tough matchup. Anytime anybody needs to play this Bonner Frender gas team with the three guards and those two bigs that can really control things in the front court. Yes, uh, Kettner is, you know, probably projects as a wing at the next level, and, and he plays out there a little bit now. Him, him and Rucker are a handful. They're two of the top five or six scorers in the league. So Carroll's got their hands full with them. Darrell, they call him Rel Davis, introduced for Archbishop Carroll. Ian Williams, we talked about him in our open. Tremendously talented young guard. Munir Craig. Craig spent a little bit of time on the shelf, hurt this year. He's back now, averaging 11 points per contest. Drew Corral, number 22, and then some size coming out there with Luca Foster as the fifth starter for Archbishop Carroll. Huck, it really is the most fun time of the year here to bring you back inside the broadcast booth. You've watched so many games all year long, and this is what it comes down to. I'm not asking you to pick a winner, but what will be the defining characteristic of the 2024 Philadelphia Catholic League boys basketball playoffs? Well, there's going to be a ton of competitiveness. Uh, there, it's top to bottom. It's a great league. Um, at the top, those top six teams are really, really close to one another. You can make a case that these two teams are right there with them. Um, and one of these teams got to try to get a win tonight so they can get to the quarterfinals uh, in a tough matchup on the road, but I, I, I'm sure they would relish that opportunity. No doubt about it. Our buddy Brady Joyce is with us on the camera, does an excellent job all year long. And by virtue of this 6 o'clock tip, when the ball goes in the air here, it is official. We're underway with playoff basketball here in Philadelphia. Bonner Prendergast in green and the home Patriots of Archbishop Carroll in white. Archbishop Carroll starts out on a man-to-man -man set. And they throw a turnover, does Bonner Prendergast. Ian Williams comes back the other way. Not a great look from Deuce Kettner. He's a willing passer out of the post hawk, but that time Bonner Prendergast yeah, was, got confused. That was really careless coming there. I mean, uh, I think he had a better opportunity to make a better play there. Uh, it's not the way you want to start off a game, and turnovers are going to be important in this game. Couldn't quite get it up and in. It was a good move from Munir Gregg, but maybe wasn't aggressive once he got to the spot. Turnaround, fire, no good that time from Kevin Rucker. So they've gotten the ball into the hands of their two playmakers early on here, Huck, but haven't gotten any of them to fall. That one will fall. He can and do that. He can, step, out. he can do that. He can step out, hit a three. He's usually took from the top of the key, but uh, utilizes the corners as well. 10 for 29 now on the air from beyond the arc for Corral. Selden and good hands in the passing lane from Archbishop Carroll. They don't switch off that high ball screen. Getting to a really good spot was Womack and couldn't knock it off the glass and in. Tough angle there. Yeah, and a double dribble. Really good call from this side of the floor. I think early on, Bobby, the teams are going to have to feel each other out a little bit. Uh, there might be some nerves. Um, you know, I could, I could see that with Carroll. They're, they're a really young team. Uh, Bonner should have, Bonner Prenny should have a little bit more composure. Uh, experienced bunch. Defense! Defense! 
trouble with the handles. First couple minutes of play. Wow, tough shot there. No call, and Archbishop Carroll comes down with the rebound. One and done for Bonner Prendergast. Got some deflections early, some bobbles early. Uh, teams don't look comfortable. No doubt, I think it will pick up. Late arriving crowd, you can excuse them for that. Six o'clock tip. Archbishop Carroll's been doing a lot more of that. Good contest. In rhythm, Rucker couldn't hit it, but really good doing job on both sides of the ball. And Bonner Prendergast retains possession. Kenny Gatling with the block on one end and the offensive rebound on the other. And that's how he contributes. He can do things like that. He can get an offensive rebound and a putback, set some screens, and play pretty good defense down the other end. He's well, a big body. Tonight in the Catholic League is going to be a war. And Rucker got to the basket. And they got another steal. Deuce Kettner. Kettner to the basket. Oh, my goodness. Almost went down the Euro step. Get one more look here. Good anticipation. And two on two. Hawk, you know this ball isn't going anywhere. It's going up. Yes, it is. Yeah, when he's leading the break, no doubt. And if Rocker had it in his hands, he'd do the same. Tonight in the Catholic League, it's the battle of the Blue Root, Huck. You have Devin Prep hosting Cardinal O'Hara at 7 o'clock p.m. And then, of course, this battle right here between Bonner Prendergast and Archbishop Carroll. And, Bob, that's right to my liking. Being a Springfield guy, I'm right by Cardinal O'Hara. <laughs> and uh, then take two exits up to get here. These, these schools, Old Southern Division foes, are separated about 10, 12, 13 miles, um, depending which way you come. Bonner Prendergast now stays in that man-to-man -man defense. Williams is the one to flash to the top of the key. Williams lost his footing, fortunate to maintain possession. Foster, and that one was blocked. Quite a few blocks already, some <laughs> deflections. Uh, that one was Kettner. Defensive tone. Rucker, good hands by Williams. And it was curling its way down the floor and Foster lost it. Rel Davis picks up the personal foul. And we're still looking for a bit of pace and possession here. Yeah, Williams on one end and Womack on the other pretty much did the same exact thing. Went, went up against the bigger guy and just took the ball off of him. Four minutes and 33 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Rucker finds Kettner to come to him. And Kettner went right up into the double team. You know that Gatling was open on the wing there, but Archbishop Carroll willing to take that chance. And they're letting him play. And there's another block. Greg is blocked for a second time. Give Gatling both of them. And that three is good. That's Nasir Rolls. He just checked into the game, and that's what he does. Really lethal from the corners with a three-point shot. Well, and you catch him in rhythm, don't you, coming off that block. They are letting him play, Huck. Oh, no doubt about that. This is old school. Kind of like Northern Division game back in the 90s. We'll get one more look at it here. Attacking the outside hip is Kyrie Womack. And they say, hey, he just tripped. Good student section here, as you can see, right-hand side of your screen. There's another triple. And a timeout called on the floor. 30-second timeout. Archbishop Carroll, three for three from beyond the arc, Huck. And we did a game here last year where Archbishop Carroll hit 19 threes. It's not quite the same offense this year. A lot of different pieces, but they can still knock it down from deep. They can. They're not nowhere near what they were doing last year. They were pretty much taking a three-point shot every time down the court. Um, they get 17 or 18 off a game, uh, and on, on a good night, they can make a nice uh, bunch of those. 
You look at Archbishop Carroll, the three-point percentage is going down the line. 37% for Ian Williams, a very proficient three-point shooter. Luca Foster, he's shot it 58 times. He's made 32% of them. And then a bunch of guys right around 30%. But still some volume shooting there, Huck, and Foster, unabashed. Foster's gotten better as, in, over the last six games, so his, his, his average is probably a little higher than that now. But in Catholic League, he was doing that. He was, he was shooting the ball well. Another it, block. This time, Drew Corral took it off the backboard. And Rawls lost the basketball. Ian Williams, his pass got away from him. Yeah, the Friars look a little unsure of themselves. Um, should they go? Should they not go? Uh, not really getting any kind of rhythm offensively. Someone's going to... They're going to have to make a couple plays here to get out of a little bit of a funk to start this game. Tough shot, but again going straight up was Foster. Corral brought the double team as well to the strong side. So I think the idea is pretty clear. Francis Bowe saying, hey, who's not going to beat us at the rim? Rucker and Kettner. We'll let Kenny Gatling take as many as he wants from the wing. And, and so it. far, Bonner Prendergast Huck hasn't given up the ball in those double team situations. No, they haven't, and it's a good strategy, especially if the referees let them play. Another offensive rebound, this time from Archbishop Carroll. Rawls, no good from three. Bonner Prendergast, great offense, and it's Gatling this time on the strong side block. And that's what Womack can do. He gets up into the lane. He likes to drop it off for layups uh, to teammates. Really quick player. The Bonner's going to need some of the other guys besides Rucker and Kettner to, to score a little bit tonight. It'd be key if Selden can knock down some perimeter shots. Williams against Reggie Selden. Good one-on-one -on -one matchup. Now Foster, so skilled. Got into the lane, and he was stripped. Really good defense, and he picks up the personal foul on the loose ball. Hey. Bob, when I get home tonight and I got to rewatch his game so I can stat the game, my deflections column is going to take a beating early. <laughs> I think so. Great on ball defense there. Some help defense came from number zero for Bonner, Prendergast, Kevin Rucker, but Kyrie Womack mismatched defensively, gave up a lot of inches to Luca Foster, did a good job on the ball. Rucker trying to get going. And he banked it home. Had to adjust that in midair there because of the big shot blocking prow prowess of this guy, Munir Gregg. Well, when you can score, you get, you, you get bank shots like that from time to time. Nice aggressive move there by Gregg. It was good to see him hit an early three, too. He's the type of player that if he gets off a little bit early, he, he can end up having a good game. If he starts off slow, sometimes he'll fade. And that one there, a little nudge came against Selden. That's his first. And the team's first. Munir Craig on the year. 63% from the line. Courtesy of this guy sitting to my left here who does the best stats in the biz. Very proficient that time from the line. 11-7. Archbishop Carroll leads it home. And the student section which takes up that whole sideline there. Calling out for defense, but an offensive carom after the miss. Rucker's going right at the freshman. I heard in your interview last night with Coach Bo that he likes to put him on the best offensive player on the other team. Good defense there. Deuce Kettner was fading away, and the length of Archbishop Carroll is bothering the wings in the front court for Bonner Prendergast thus far. Down to the final 50 seconds of the first quarter. Archbishop Carroll saying, hey, you're not going to come out to the logo to guard us. Terrell Davis. He's going to wind this thing down. Yeah, you don't see this too often in this league. Uh, it's not a bad strategy, though. Uh, both teams will only go probably six deep, maybe a seventh guy. And now Bonner Prendergast brings the double. Davis. Davis up and under it. He couldn't get it over the front rim. Can't argue with that look. So Bonner Prendergast. Really good move there. He just couldn't get the finish. 
can cut it to one possession. And they put it in the hands of Kyrie Womack. What a veteran he has been. So many big games. Good find for Reggie Selden. And a great ending to the first quarter for Bonner, Prendergast, and Billy Cassidy. And that has to feel good. Calling out from the sideline when to run and trap at the, at the midcourt stripe to get Archbishop Carroll to speed up. Maybe a little bit of a gift that Davis didn't get that over the front rim. And then you cash in on the other end. Definitely, Bob. Uh, it, was, it was definitely a good little coaching move there by Bill. And, uh, you know, that's a good feeling for the Friars as they, uh, as they head to the bench. Uh, you know, instead of down maybe 13, 14, 7, they cut it to 11 to 10. A little bit of a five-point swing there with the missed layup. And then a good kick by Womack to Selden. And it's, it's what Selden does. He's a catch-and-shoot kid. Uh, and, and when he's going well, he can, he can knock a few down per game. This portion of today's game brought to you by Next Play Basketball. It's an AAU basketball organization here in the Philadelphia area. We appreciate their sponsorship of Bob Long Sports over the last two years. They got great coaches and uh, teams from third grade through 12th grade, boys and girls. Tryouts are coming up. Little Birdie told me, saw some of their social media. So if you're looking to get into the AAU basketball circuit, this is one of the best programs. It's the best program out there. They'll help you to get better at... Whatever it might be, you want to make junior high, you want to make your high school team, or do you want to play at the college level? Next play can help you get there. Great American Pub. It's a great pub with three locations, two of them in Conshohocken and Phoenixville, our favorites. And we want to thank Chuck Hempshire for supporting us over the years. Great American Pub. If you're looking for a place to go after the game, look no further. The chant is, let's go, Carroll, from the student body here packing the gym. Terrell Davis. And now Ian Williams has the much longer Kettner on him. Luca Foster has the mismatch. Yeah, Drew Corral, look, by, look at that, trying to make some space inside against Womack. Yeah, they're switching everything, it looks like. I like Kettner on uh, Williams. You got to shoot over him if he goes to shoot from the outside, and he's gonna, if he's going to drive on him, he's going to have to go up over him. And they're going to call a foul on the block. Francis Bow, you see, he wants the off arm. Certainly, the off arm was extended. That was a great box out on the other end by Kyrie Womack to start the break. And for for a kid his size, he's got to do those types of things in order to get those rebounds. Yeah, a little bit of a chicken wing there. Well, we've run all year long in the Philadelphia Catholic League, up and down the floor. Now both teams getting into the half court, and a moving screen sends it the other way. That's a call. That, that type of call has been called a lot this year. Uh, keep a stat, um, offensive fouls forced, and, and that's usually one of the main ones. Yeah, yeah. Game, a little bit in neutral right now, this game. Well, and let's see if we can get this again. They're trying to run an elevator screen here, Huck coming through, and then those two doors are going to close right there, but too late in doing so. Yeah. Good call. Then closing time. Greg couldn't hit it. Boy, if he could finish with his left hand, it would have been a lot easier for him. Tried to get back to his right and got himself off balance. It was a decent uh, contest there by Womack, too. Womack couldn't hit it. Can't argue with the look in the lane, and Terrell Davis puts it in park. Davis, and now they'll set into the half court. I think that was a good idea. That possession got out of control, and Corral could have been called for a travel. Williams is blocked by Gatling. It was certainly clean up top. They're calling body contact as he goes up into the shooting motion. I think it was off the ball. I think Womack reaching in. He called it on number three. Interesting. Yep. Good call there, Huck. And that official was in a really good spot to see that as well. The 82% free throw shooter missed one of two, but there's Luca Foster. Now the Fires got really lazy there on that, on that, on that rebound. That has to be corralled by, by, by somebody. 
It's way too easy. Foster leads the team with seven and a half rebounds per contest on the season. And that was a fastball where a soft toss would have done from Kettner to Gatling. But Foster's a really active kid. Uh, you know, he gets up and down the floor. He can get up to the rim. Leads the team in uh, block shots, rebounding. Could step out, hit threes. He's really emerging. Uh, he's really developed this year so far. Hey, folks, uh, let us know where you're at. Let us know where you're watching the game from in the YouTube chat, and we'll give you a shout on the air. Make sure to like the video and follow us here on Bob Long Sports. This won't be the only contest we do, as that is thrown away. And impatience that time from Archbishop Carroll Huck. It was a good idea by Ian, um, Ian Williams. Corral wasn't looking, though. If he was looking, he had a mismatch in there. He probably catches that ball pretty easily and lays it right in over the, over the smaller defender. Corey Francis has checked in the game for, for the Friars. I really like this kid. He, he's not uh, really a, a focal point this year. Trust me when I tell you, he is going to be good down the line. And Francis gets a touch against Corral. Great look inside for Deuce Kettner. Good but that's possession. all Francis. Yeah, good first possession by him. Good playmaker a little bit. He's got a scorer's edge to him. More so than anybody else all night long, although maybe Corral falls into that category with that good bucket. Francis played off two feet there, which allowed him the time to get into the lane and make the right decision. And now he jive, he just blasts by Corral. He likes that matchup. Well, he's not, he's not let me down after my early comments. No, <laughs> he's, he's came not. right out and, uh, and done some things early here, which, put, and quite frankly, Bonner needs that. Well, listen, by the time you get to this game, you've played a full regular season. So freshmen become sophomores, sophomores become juniors, and Bonner Prendergast has it going on offensively. We're starting to settle in, Bob. The energy level's starting to rise. Uh, uh, Rucker showed some emotion. He's got to play with emotion. He's got to be controlled with it. But when he plays with emotion, he's really good. Good move by Williams and Corral got to a great spot. A little rushed going up with that one. He had a two-inch advantage over everybody standing around him. Uh, and a year from now, maybe two, you know he, he should be going up dunking at Corey Francis, making Huck Palmer look like Nostradamus. Bob, I'm not just keeping the stats when I'm watching these games. I'm paying attention, right? And I really like this kid. I think, I think, I think, and maybe not next year, but a year after, he's got a chance to lead this league in scoring. Now that is high praise. Timeout on the floor, 30-second timeout. We got folks checking in already. Let us know. It's America's favorite game. Where yet? Let us know where you're watching the game from. Jaden saying he likes Carroll here tonight. Steve says hello and asks, do we know who the winner will play yet? The answer is no. Well, I guess we know in this particular game we do. If, uh, if Archbishop Carroll wins, they will play the two seed, Newman Garetti. If Bonner Prendergast wins, they will play the number one seed, Roman Catholic. Philadelphia Catholic League reseeds before the quarterfinal and makes sure that the top seed, Roman Catholic, is going to get the lowest remaining or worst, if you will, seed by virtue of their number one seed. So by the time that the Devin Prep Cardinal O'Hara game, let's say, gets to the second half with the second with a seven o'clock tip, they'll know who the winner of that game will play. Correct. And Darrell Davis traveled. The momentum has shifted here, Huck. It, it, it certainly has. Uh, Carol, young team, they're starting to get a little flustered, a um, little impatient. Uh, they just got to, you know, bring it back in, get settled, and, and do what they do well. Francis remains out there for Bonner Prendergast. Rightly so. The offense has been ignited when he's been on the floor. Good double team and active hands by Ian Williams. Yeah, he's one of the uh, leading uh, kids in steals in, in, in the league. Another block shot, this time by Selden. And that should be Bonner Prendergast basketball. Really good call. Listen, Rawls here actually has a cutting foster. And whether it's a lob or a bounce pass, but probably the lob might have been the call there. Well, they pulled that off a few times this year, so it, it's definitely in the playbook. Good move by Womack. Up and under, and just enough from Luca Foster, but nobody came up with the rebound. 
But Archbishop Carroll continues to contest at the rim. Big block, but a lot of body contact. Uh, down the other end here, Bob, that's a really nice play by Womack. Kettner being a senior, he, he's 6'7". He doesn't need to bring the ball and kind of like windmill it like that before he shoots a layup. He just go up and dunk the ball. I, I mean, he's quite capable of doing it. Just go to the rim and, and, and dunk the ball. That's just the first foul on Rucker, and that's, you know, I, I've seen some games where he's, he's been uh, in foul trouble, and Bonner cannot have that, that happen tonight. Rawls, 65% from the line this year. And he goes one of two. Francis now giving the keys to the car offensively. They're running the offense through this kid. What a finish. The young man has come out to play in the Philadelphia Catholic League playoffs. Good hands. And Bonner Prendergast first on the basketball. Good play by Kettner. Great defensive play. Maybe that'll get him going down on the other end too. A little boost of confidence. Rucker is blocked by Foster. Quick on the closeout. Great range there by Foster. Get out there. Williams trying to settle it down. You can't argue with that look. They're just not falling right now. Reggie Selden has already hit one from beyond the arc. And a timeout was called by Billy Cassidy. I think it came before the crossover. It didn't look good, obviously, as that call came after he beat Rawls to the basket. Yeah, the whistle was way, way before that. Well, the whistle was not quite before uh, that, but I, I, my guess is the call came before that. The, uh, the, grant, the call from the bench, that is. Gotcha. We got a good one here. Some folks checking in on the Where You At segment. I want to thank our buddy Will Ryan. Will Ryan and the gang, he says, tuned in from Chestnut Hill. That's Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, by the way. Williams says Quaker Valley, where he's tuning in from. Ethan from Chambersburg. Matt Ryan, he says he likes Bonner by double digits here tonight. And our buddy Austin Meekum from Bucknell University says, hoping fellow PCL guys, the Griffins, of course, are watching for the next few recruiting classes. Well, this is a good place to look, no doubt about that. Good to hear that uh, Matt's, uh, Will's checking in. Absolutely. Um, he did a great job last night with you, Bob. That was, that was a terrific program. I didn't get to see all of it, but I got about two hours in. And uh, we'll, we'll catch up on the rest at, at some point. Well, I appreciate that. Anybody that got through all three hours last night, they're a friend of ours, and they are a basketball junkie. There's a three again from Corey Francis. It's his night. He started, he started fast, and he's gotten faster. He hasn't slowed down at all. Largest lead for Bonner Prendergast. Well, I think he's got 10 points already, and, and a, at least one assist, and he dropped off. Couple of threes, couple of drives, maybe 12 points. And efficient. I'm not sure he's missed a field goal. No. Now Ian Williams. Can Archbishop Carroll get things under control? Foster, contact. And I don't know, are they going to call this in the act? It looks like they did, but looked to me like it's Ellen the Gather. And Bonner Prendergast offering the same thing. Watch. It's before he ever comes to the floor, and then he rises up. I think Bonner has a case. That's two on Selden, too. Drew Corral checks out. In his place comes... I'm sorry, checks in, and Rel Davis checking out. This is Camden Jackson checking in. He's a freshman for Bonner, checking in for uh, Reggie Selden. He's played the role of, of seventh man all year. He doesn't get a lot of tick, but uh, he's, he's performed decently when he's gotten in there, being a young kid. So the seniors move on this year, of course, for Billy Cassidy and his club, but in comes Corey Francis, Cam Jackson. And more. So yes, they'll get younger next year, but they have some talent coming up behind them. 
Feels like you're saying that about many teams in the Catholic League this year. Very deep league. Some good teams did not make it this year. Yeah, and saw how well LaSalle was playing at the end of the year. West Catholic, you know they're coming off a state championship. A lot of young guys, but guys that were there last year, and those two teams did not make it. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of these teams just reload. Final 27 seconds. And again, Bonner Prendergast. This time they're willing to wait things out. Final six seconds. Down to four. Down to one, it's gonna be Francis at the horn and the tip will not go. No good on the tip, didn't get it off in time. And that is the end of the first half. We got a good one here. And it's the visitors, Bonner Prendergast that trailed early and a nice run, 17 to eight in the final portion of that half. They lead going to the break. We'll take a quick break and come back with us in just a few minutes for the second half here on Bob Long Sports. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time, hmm. but it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make, hmm. some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest? no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest. Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at Gola Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of transactions in dozens of industries. Gola gets it. And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design, relocation planning and budgeting, helping you manage your vendors, construction oversight, 
all with zero out-of-pocket cost to you. A turnkey experience that adds real value. Value that flows right to your bottom line. Gola gets it. We've been partnering with clients like you for over 40 years, and we know what's important. Solving problems, creating flexibility, protecting and stretching your dollars. Philadelphia-based with a national presence. Get to know Gola. Gola gets it. When your car needs repairs and you can't wait, Meineke can help. With life's crazy schedule between work and family, you'll love Meineke's same-day service. Call today and Meineke will get your car in today. For new brakes, exhaust repairs, or your check engine light comes on, trust Meineke to do the job right. And families have been coming to Meineke for years because Meineke works on any make or model vehicle. Same-day service, value, and trust. Meineke, doing car care right. Be a part of the biggest live events. The must-see matches. He's gone! The game day celebrations. Experience live sports and entertainment the way they're meant to be seen. With Joe Hand Promotions, the global leader of live entertainment for bars, restaurants, and cinemas. Create unforgettable moments that fans won't want to miss. Keep the food and drinks flowing with watch parties that will bring customers in the door and expand dwell time. And watch as these visitors turn into loyal customers with exclusive content relationships with the nation's largest sports and entertainment providers. In over 10,000 bars, restaurants, and cinemas across America and customizable packages for every type of venue. Make your business the place for the next must-see event. Because if fans can't make it to the stadium or arena, your venue is the next best place. What does this win mean? Been with the family for a long time. With our team chemistry, it was bound to happen. Just close, baby! Such a big win from Cross Country Mortgage. Dedicated to getting it done. My name is William Ryan and I'm attending Boston College next year. LaSalle obviously academically is, is so strong and that uh, prepares me for college, prepares me for the next four years at Boston College. But furthermore, I think the community here at LaSalle and the experiences that they provide uh, will allow me to thrive at Boston College next year. The College Counseling Office here at LaSalle prepared me for the college application process through just one-on-one -on -one interviews with my college counselor and also just having the door open here and whenever I had any questions there were so many resources for me to use and for me to be able to fill out the application to the best of my ability. Obviously we have the choose your path motto but I like to say it's more of a blaze your path motto. Uh, on the basketball team, LaSalle gave me an awesome opportunity to help the team in ways that I wouldn't have expected otherwise by you know, putting together scouting reports and stuff like that. And that's what LaSalle offers. It, it offers every kid to kind of take the initiative and, and go forth and do what they want, but do it in an individualistic way. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did.
Welcome back, folks. Second half about to get underway here on Bob Long Sports. Bob Long and Huck Palmer, your broadcast team, and we spent the last, oh, I don't know, eight minutes talking scenarios, scenarios, scenarios in terms of seeding, PIAA playoffs. So let's rattle off as much as we can here, Huck. Cardinal O'Hara and Archbishop Carroll both in the same classification. So the question was asked, if Archbishop Carroll loses tonight and then Art and Cardinal O'Hara goes on the road to Devon Prep and wins, what does that mean? Catholic League is on a point system. Ten points for every regular season win. And what is determining of PIAA eligibility and where you qualify is not where, how far did you go in the playoffs, but how many points do we accumulate? So the regular season still matters. Cardinal O'Hara scored 40 points, four wins. Archbishop Carroll with 80 points. And so we did the math, 10 points for a win tonight. If Archbishop Carroll loses and O'Hara gets those 10 points, they're up to 50. 15 points for a quarterfinal win and then 20 for a semifinal win. And so that, only a semifinal win and a trip to the final for Cardinal O'Hara, or a win, because if you win the Catholic League title, you automatically go, would allow the Lions to get in over the Patriots. Yeah, the short of it, Bob, is O'Hara has some work to do. And you know what, Carroll? Carroll's a half of basketball here, only down five. Very capable of coming back and, and taking this game. Good hands again by Luca Foster. Up the floor is Greg. And Greg finishes to cut the deficit to three. Good strong move there by uh, Bonner starts the half with two careless turnovers. No doubt from about their seniors. that. We'll get one more look at this one here. It's taking us back pretty far, but Bonner Prendergast moves quickly and Rucker tried to get to the baseline. Back to live action, 7.27 to play. That's a good way to, to slice into the momentum you had in that last half of the second quarter by committing two turnovers in the first 20 seconds. Rel Davis thinking about the three. Foster now. Been bothered at times by the length of Rucker and Kettner. Wild shot won't go. Corey Francis brings it down. Francis getting a start to here. I uh, can't say I don't blame him. And that's how you play off two feet if you're Kevin Rucker. That's his game, slashing, getting to the basket. Really good finisher. Now Ian Williams. Rolls. Nobody picked him up late on the closeout, but he barely got it to the front rim. He's more of a catch-and-shoot guy. He had, to put a, he had to put the ball on the floor there. Look at this. Mm. Just couldn't get it to fall with the English. But Luca Foster left the floor, not knowing what he was going to do with it. And Bonner Prendergast is going to take over as a result. That's it's Deuce Kettner to the line for two. That's twice Womack's had the ball near the baseline and going glass with it. I don't know if it's intentional or not. Um, that one's just rolled around and out. And the first one was close, too. Maybe you know something I don't. <laughs> Deuce is a little out of whack here. Uh, still time to find it. He's very capable. He's been a really good player all year. See if he can build off of that. One of two. And it's a six-point lead for the Friars of Bonner Prendergast. Davis. And again, one and done. Guess who? Corey Francis pulls it down. That's a tough matchup for Davis with that rocker on a nice pass. Beautiful finish by Kettner, but once again, Corey Francis sets it all up. Munir Gregg count it and one. And we go up and down the floor. Well, that's what we expected. Hopefully we see a little bit more of that. Uh, teams start playing a little bit more free, and sometimes when you're playing free like that, you're not overly thinking. You're not making some... Some of the mistakes you might normally make when you're, when you're playing slow and, and you're, you're methodical. Huck, this Bonner Prendergast team, not your average 10 seed, not your average four win Philadelphia Catholic League team. They had to go Roman Catholic, Archbishop Ryan, and Newman Garetti in the last week of the season. You had two of those teams in back to back days, Archbishop Ryan and Newman Garetti. And let me tell you, 
Archbishop Ryan and Newman Goretti had some trouble at times, closed out Bonner Prendergast late, but this team can score, it can defend, and when they're engaged, they're as tough to beat as anybody, proving it here tonight. Absolutely, Bob. I was there Saturday against Newman, uh, Newman Goretti, and uh, they played really well. It was a really good game, 71-65 tight throughout, competitive, spirited. Um, you know, they, they just haven't been able to make some plays to the end at the end of games to, to get some of these wins. They were really good against Ryan, too, uh, on Thursday night. Uh, and that game was really close well into the fourth quarter. Problem has been closing out games. So, Bond and Prendergast, they're right where they have been. In control of a contest, Selden to shoot two. Clobbered on his way up. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. He, he, he hung in the air there, and he, and he drug himself back, and and, and Carol, uh, Carol definitely fouled him there. So the question is, they've been in this position. Can they finish it here tonight? Well, they're, they're quite capable of finishing. I mean, I you know, not not to say that Carroll's not a really good team. I just won't put them at quite the level of Newman and, and Ryan. Um so it, it may not be as, uh, as hard at shore as it is against those teams. Those, those two teams are right there at the top who could, who could definitely cut down the nets uh, in, in, in a couple weeks. Speaking of Newman Goretti, the Newman Goretti Boys Basketball Twitter page and social media channel has checked into the chat and saying they're watching from 10th and more. Nice. Doing some scouting, Tuck. It's a very engaged social media presence. A lot of teams do a great job with their socials. And Newman Goretti is one of those teams, so we're big fans of the guys from 10th and more. Two shots coming for Archbishop Carroll. But again, getting to the basket. That's the idea there, Huck. And yeah. They've had trouble with some threes from the outside that have been blocked. Well, get to the rim, get into the body of those shot blockers, and get to the line. Well, this half started uh, it's pretty much opposite of the first half. They were letting them play. And I think in the first half, those call, you're going to let them play early and kind of like figure out how the game's going to go. Um, and then this half, th these are fouls, though. They're, they're, they're making good calls. And good. There's second time Foster's gotten in there and done that. Yeah, and I think he might have been hit. That time he was hit, and he just can't seem to finish around the rim. He'll shoot two at the line. If you don't put the body on him, he's just going to jump over you. And, and that's what they've done twice, and, and they've been beaten twice on it. Back to the Newman guys. They're probably down there, and I could see Carl and Pat. Back in the back room, taking copious notes right now. Right, right. There's no doubt about that. After Andrew Bowman helped them find the YouTube link. <laughs> Kidding, of course. We all have a role, Bob. <laughs> Great staff down there at Newman Goretti. They and even with those injuries, there they are, the two seed again, primed oh, for another really run. Really tough. They take care of the ball. Speaking of taking care of the ball, I think that'll go a long way in determining who wins the game. It has been sloppy at times. Both offenses are starting to get into the groove a bit more here in the second half. Rucker. Rucker, tough shot. Off the back iron. Good defense by Munir Gregg. Rel Davis and now Ian Williams hits the go switch. Luca Foster got one hand on it. Kyrie Womack, strong to the tin. Time out, Bonner Prendergast. Billy Cassidy likes what he sees and wants to draw some things up to look to extend this now six-point lead. Good rebound by Francis there, and he outlet it to Womack. As soon as the ball hit his hands, he kind of liked the matchup there, and it was a good, strong move. So let's talk other scenarios, maybe the most compelling one in the Philadelphia Catholic League, and that is 6A. Who will qualify for the state tournament at the 6A level? There are four teams that have made the playoffs at the 6A level, Roman Catholic, St. Joe's Prep, Archbishop Wood, the three seed, has the hammer on St. Joe's Prep. And then the six seed is Father Judge. So here's where this gets very interesting. Father Judge is 20 points behind Archbishop Wood. So they play on Friday night. The Father Judge knows they only get 15 points from that victory. And so they would need at least a semifinal win to jump ahead of Archbishop Wood if they lost. But bear in mind that St. Joe's Prep with 100 points 
and Roman Catholic with 110 points. They have their own games to play, and so it's going to be really interesting even once Friday ends, unless there's one or two scenarios that occur, we won't, still won't know which 6A teams will make it. What we do know, though, is a couple of really good teams are going to be left out. 4-11 to play third quarter. Archbishop Carroll, they probably, they, to a man, they would tell you they haven't had their best stuff here tonight, but they're in it. Six-point game. Rel Davis is fouled, and will that be on the floor or in the act? Looks like they're calling it in the act. And now they are going to put it on the floor. We're going to watch this entire replay because there is no signal either direction until the official makes his way all the way over to midcourt, and that's that's a good way to make nobody happy. No, typically they'll point right off the call, like, you know, going up for two, they'll put the two fingers up, or they'll point out of bounds. Williams, good drive. Foster tees it up and hits. Well, you get a paint touch huck. It leads to a kick out, get the feet organized, and that's when Luca Foster can knock it down. And he's been shooting the ball really well recently. He's got a nice soft touch because it comes feathery off his, off his fingertips. Ian Williams got to get going a little bit more too. That's, that's a good start and get somebody else involved, but he's going to need to score a little too. Womack is guarded by the longer Foster. Carroll trying to switch inside. Rel Davis fouls Kevin Rucker, and that was a long time coming. Again, we'll take you back to that replay. Ian Williams, and Rel Davis taps him out and says, hey, I'm going to take him. You switch off. A lot of contact there that has to be called. I'm, I'm sure beforehand the officials were like, you know, let's clean it up, let's clean it up, and uh, they went a little too far. Contact, and once again, Kettner will go to the line. Has not been proficient from the field, but when you get inside and you have that size, you're going to get yourself to the line. Most of his takes have been rushed tonight, if you notice, Bob. When he goes up, and then, like, he's not really kind of just naturally finishing. He's kind of just throwing the ball up at the rim. Uh, he's he's, he's uh, drawn some fouls, though. He's gotten to the line. I think this is the fifth and sixth time shooting foul shots. But uh, he, he's good enough to finish those and, and get M1s and, 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 and things like that. Bothered by the length, you think, of Munir Gregg and Luca Foster. Yeah, playing a little, playing a little fast is mine, too. You know, uh, you know, I think he's pressing a little bit because uh, the game didn't start out great for him. But he got two of two, and maybe seeing it go through the hoop will free him up. Five-point lead for Bonner Prendergast, and they go into a zone. Switching up the defense in live time, always impressive. Now, what does Carroll do to adjust? Still not a touch inside the three-point line. They got five out right now. That's a good look, had a paint touch, rolls for three, Off almost banked it in. I don't think he was ready to catch and shoot there. Up and under, Rucker. Kettner touched it last. Bonner's playing hard, but for my money, uh, Deuce and Kevin have not finished nearly enough tonight. Um, when he is, when he, he's had some big, both of them have some big games this year, 25 plus in multiple, multiple games. And when they're, when they're getting that, when they're scoring like that, they are finishing those types of plays. Maybe a left-handed finish there. Kind of got himself caught at an odd angle coming in from the wing. Now it's a 3-2. Kind of a matchup zone here as Kettner comes out to guard the shooter. And the three will go for Luca Foster. If Bonner's going to stay in the zone, I think they got to pay much more and more attention to Foster. He looks like the kid that's out there offensively. He's playing with a lot of confidence. Yeah, you saw what Kettner came out to get the screener, and everybody was a little bit out of position. Drew Corral. Big block. One more. It's a good look on the high ball screen and slip to the hole. But maybe that's why these Bonner bigs are double clutching. Womack guarded by Foster. They get the switch to Corral. Good look. How does that one not fall? Rucker 
That time he goes up with the correct hand, the left hand. It was soft off the glass. They're just not falling. They're not falling. It's, it's kind of been the same story all night. Selden in the corner. Let's see Bonner run a play for him. We're coming off the screen and maybe getting a good look at a three. He hasn't really had one since the one he knocked down earlier. The night of 476. Battles down the blue route. This is a good one. Reggie Selden uses that high ball screen to create the look. Munir Craig, good first step. Davis and Bonner really good on the closeout. They are closing out well. It's good ball movement, too. Craig and Corral brought it down. Counted and one for Munir Craig. The strength to get that up and over the rim and off the glass. One more luck. Great find. That's an RA right there, Bob. That's a rebound and assist for Corral. Some big offers already for Munir Greg. Lots of interest. You can see the wingspan and the measurables. They're all there. He'll continue to be a force here in the Catholic League. Foster almost got another one off of a missed foul shot. Well, Francis was the spark plug for Bonner Prendergast in the first half. Yeah, Carroll's paying a little bit more attention to him now. He, he has their attention. Bonner Prendergast for the second consecutive quarter end. Potentially looking to hold, unless Womack likes the look. Craig with now 20 seconds left. Carroll can push if they want. Rolls in rhythm, yes! And the home team leads for the first time since early in the second quarter. Seven seconds left. Francis, he's fouled, and that is the fifth team foul on Cardinal, or beg your pardon, on Archbishop Carroll. We're talking 5A teams here, 4A teams, beg your pardon. But that will send Bonner Prendergast to the line, and Francis. Corey Francis has shot it just 40, uh, 24 times from the line. He is 55% from the strike. Mike Ivey says, checking in from Lansdowne, Pennsylvania. John Black checking in as well. Thanks, everybody. Make sure in the quarter break to check in on the YouTube stream. Tell us where you're watching the game from. That's America's favorite game. Where are you at? Like the video and subscribe to the channel. So it's a one point lead, 3.7 to go. Good outlet. It's the same type of shot that he hit against LaSalle and Archbishop Carroll wanted the foul call. They don't get it. And we go to the fourth quarter with a one-point lead. Yeah, that's got to be really extreme to get that call at the end of a quarter in a game like this. I would agree. But 39-38, Bob. Um, you know, the pace might not have been what we expected. Uh, a little bit slower than, than I thought it would be. Uh, but we're, it's a one-point game. What else could you ask for? What else could you ask for? Paul Miller checking in from Monteverde Academy. And... Carter Philman saying hello from New York City. Thanks, everybody, for checking in. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, we're close to a milestone, Huck. What's that? We are close to 3,000 followers. Wow. Which, for us, is a nice number. And so if you like Catholic League basketball, if you like high school hoops, give us a follow. It means a lot to us and helps us to... Keep on doing what we're doing here. Well, it's good that uh, people are following Bob that are outside the region. Uh, I don't know if they have a tie to one of these schools or not, but, uh, you know, Bob Long, is, uh, the word is out. <laughs> we appreciate it. Ellerby checking in from North Philadelphia. Thank you for joining. I think a lot of the league that isn't playing tonight, hopefully he's checking into this one. 
fact, the other game hasn't even tipped yet. So Huck, for about three minutes, we're the only game in town. Right. You can pick up that other game, by the way, with whatever. Seven minutes ago in the second quarter, anyway. I already have my son on it. He's gonna he's pausing it as it starts. There you go. Uh, it, it's not a one-man operation over there in the basement when I'm doing the stats. <laughs> We have gone back and forth all night, and we start the fourth quarter with the home team trailing by one. Bonner Prendergast, they've been in that zone for the last half of a quarter or so, with three up top. Foster has hit some big triples. He'll try it again. And a long rebound picked up by Kyrie Womack. Francis, so quick off the bounce. And it's just been a cap on the rim for Bonner Prendergast in layup territory here tonight. Yeah, I thought Bonner was going to have numbers there, but Kyle did a pretty good job of getting back. And Offensive rebound, and they'll reset. So the zone is great if you can coerce a lot of tough threes. Count it, and one. That's where the zone falls apart. Interior passing, and what got it all started, the offensive carom. Well, I think the last two times, uh, Greg's last two baskets have been off offensive rebounds and uh, uh, nice assists from his teammates and for N1 opportunities. And that's the second in the last few minutes that Munir Greg now has the opportunity to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. He didn't do it last time, but on both of those finishes, he was hit hard. And his strength, a young man with the strength to get it up and above the rim. Yeah, young but nice live body. No doubt about that. Full court pressure from Archbishop Carroll. I like the look coming out of the quarter break. Some token pressure though as Womack has it across the timeline. It was at most a seven-point lead for Bonner Prendergast. Archbishop Carroll has crawled all the way back to take a two-point lead. This has been the bugaboo for the four lost Friars that have been in just about every game they've played. Late leads that have succumbed. And just dribbling, dribbling through a lot of traffic. Yeah, that's not going to get it done. Pop Rucker slow to get back. Open three for Foster, and this place is going nuts. Five-point lead. Largest lead for Archbishop Carroll. 6-18 to play. And another look, tickling the twine. Too much time to study that one. Foster's been dialed in when he's had a moment. And how about this? So that was just a timeout to get a substitution in from Francis Bow. They gave the keep it rolling sign, almost similar to what you'd see in terms of a false start, except it's just the two extended figures well, on each hand. Well, keep Ru it rolling. Rucker's hobbled over there, and I wonder if he saw that and said, you know what, let's get right back out there while he's still he's got some pain lingering. Very interesting. And a giveaway by Nasir Rawls. Contact. Count it. It's been a big run for the Patriots of Archbishop Carroll. And the defense leads to offense. Well, I'll tell you this much, Bob. In the last few moments, the big difference between these two teams is that Carroll, even though they're younger, has, has been tougher. And They've this been... time they will time out, and they will sit down because it's coming from the Cassidy-led bench, Hawk. Yes, and, and Carroll, Carroll right now just wants a little bit more. They're getting on the floor, offensive rebounds, sharing the ball. Um, their, their baskets are coming off assists or steals. Shot by Byrne, checks in and says, let's go pop for Pop Rucker. Gambino is what it looks like to me, saying hello to us. Thank you very much. Let us know where you're watching the game from, and thanks for checking in to the little humble abode that is our office here tonight in Radnor, Pennsylvania. Beautiful John Carroll High School, Archbishop Carroll. And how about the new floor here, Huck? Brand new. Shining nice and bright. They did a really nice they job with looking, this gym. It's looking great. It's bringing a, you know, I said, I think the lights are a little bit better too from the last time I was here. I don't know if that's the floor having a part of that, but uh, I was talking to Coach Bo before the game about that, and he's, he's really happy with it. Well, I guess it's probably time to announce, Huck, before we get off air, 
where we're going on Friday. Bob Long Sports is headed to Warminster, Pennsylvania. Archbishop oh. Wood, Father Judge, Teacher versus Pupil. John Mosco, Chris Roantree, longtime assistant under John. Two 6A teams. Judge has to win to keep their postseason playoff hopes alive. Archbishop Wood probably needs to win to keep their PIAA hopes alive. And of course, most importantly, Huck, the Palestra awaits the winner. That, that's going to be a great, uh, great evening of basketball up there in Warminster. Um, the place is going to be electric. It's uh, those those two teams are really going to get up and down. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun that game. We've got a good one on hand there, Bob. I think the other game that maybe most folks might be interested in. I mean, certainly it's the only other game that's currently set. But St. Joe's Prep hosting Archbishop Ryan. And I tell you, I don't know if it's the, the TV execs or what. I say that in jest because I know St. Joe's Prep likes the early game. Selden couldn't hit the three, but the 4 o'clock start at 17th and Girard and then the 7 o'clock start in Warminster, nobody needs to make a decision. Nobody needs to make a decision. I know I don't because I'm going to be watching both of them. <laughs> That's right. I already have the Friday lined up. Open three for Rawls, and Rawls stays hot. Carroll's just oozing with confidence right now, playing under control, once again sharing it, finding open spaces, kick out, that's what he does, corner threes. Danger time for the Friars here. they got to make a run in the next minute or so. That's at least a 10-0 run, if not more. I think it's 11, right? It was 38-37. Archbishop Carroll took their first lead of the second half with just a few seconds to play in that third quarter. Bonner Prendergast got two more I think to end the corner. The corner has been 11-0. I think it was 35-30 at one point, too, at least. So that would be a 19-4 run. Selden. Tough shot, and he'll shoot two. Munir Gregg doesn't like the call. There's another one. That's halfway down for Monsignor Bonner, Archbishop Prendergast. He just can't seem to get it to fall. It's been a story all night. Some of it's been um, lack of focus. Some of it's just been bad luck. And that one qualifies as bad luck. Second one coming, and Selden does hit one of two. Full court pressure and a jump ball. Alternate possession will give it to Bonner Prendergast. Good defense off the made free throw. We're going to need more of that. Come out of a dead ball situation, gives you a great opportunity to set up full court. I thought he hit the whistle kind of early there. I thought, you know, there may be another second or two to, to fight, wrestle that free, but Bonner maintains possession anyway. Selden, hit, not called, splat on the floor, splat on the three, six point lead. We'll get one more look. You make the call at home on this one. Close out. Did he give him space to land? It's a tough angle for us here. That official's right He's on top right of on it. right on top of it. And then while that was happening, while you were looking at that, Bob, Rucker just picked up his fourth foul, 70 feet from the basket. And the third team foul there against Bonner Prendergast. Rucker's not going anywhere, though. He has to stay out there on the floor. Stay with us post game. We'll have interviews with the player or players of the game from the winning team and the winning head coach. Quick turnaround for the winner. They'll play on Friday. If Archbishop Carroll wins, they're going to take on Newman Caretti as the seventh seed. Bonner Prendergast would travel to Holy Family to take on Roman Catholic. Ian Williams up and under. It's an eight point lead. Good possession there. Took some clock. Uh, took some clock uh, away there and, and got a bucket. And they lost the basketball. Reggie Selden couldn't squeeze it tight. 
A long way to go here with 3.50 to go, but to this point, this young Archbishop Carroll team, Kettner picks up the fourth team foul here in the fourth quarter. This young Archbishop Carroll team has out-executed the very veteran Bonner Prendergast Friars. Yeah, they've, they've played a strong fourth quarter so far. And end of the third, actually, that's when it started. Rail Davis. Rawls, Foster, throw it down. Don't track her alert. Hello. I'll tell you that as soon as I get home. And Luke has been up there all season long. Contact and a foul in the act of shooting. Francis Bow wants that one on the floor. Not going to get that call. It's an interesting argument, though, as you see that replay in slow motion. Where does the swipe come? And again, we are splitting hairs here. But that slap is indeed on the gather. But so long as Bonner Prendergast is going to struggle from the line, Huck, doesn't much matter. Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of time here. It's a 10-point game. He might be able to cut it to nine here. Oh, it's, he does. What I don't like right now, Bob, is the body language. Um, I, I just, I don't know. Something's got to happen quick for that to turn around. Luca Foster and on the feed from Rel Davis. And did they just call a technical foul on Luca Foster? Well, we'll get one more look. This is fantastic. Did he hang on for too long? I don't know. Uh, letter to law, maybe he did, but, you know, let the kids play. Well, maybe exactly what Bonner, well, certainly what they needed, but that's a tough call. Luca Foster was greeted by a couple of young fans out there. I think they thought it was a timeout. Yeah. They're coming from the right. Carroll bench. That's okay. They thought a timeout was called. The officials did the right thing there. They just got them off the court and we moved on. Pretty harmless situation. Good use of discretion. Absolutely. <laughs> like you could have done for momentarily hanging on the rim, you could argue. Fair point, Bob. <laughs> You're always coming up with them. I, I try. <laughs> Wow, is that the Dick Weiss, Hoops Weiss, saying this is a godsend for high school basketball fans? It's a godsend for Barner Prendergast as they're getting back into the game, and a foul is called, and that is it. If that's Pop Rucker picking up that foul 90 feet from the basket, that's it. He's done. Another look. Yeah, that's too ill-advised. Ill-advised, too risky. He's got to understand the situation there. I mean, it's a little early to start fouling. Um, he needs to be on the court. Plain and simple. Whether he's playing great, okay, poorly, he needs to be on the court because he can turn it around at any second. So Rel Davis will shoot two. Bonus time the rest of the way for Archbishop Carroll. An 11 point lead. And if they can finish this off, you know what this means. It means Newman Garetti's night of watching film is over. And Roman Catholic has to flip over to the Devon Prep Cardinal O'Hara game. There's a giveaway. Nasir rolls. And that was ill-advised. It was. I think he was looking for another lob. Got to have it. Good finish. Playing off two feet. Timeout called. And it might just be a whistle for a hurt player there as Selden was dinged up. Yeah, Selden wants to stay in the game, but I think when they blow the play dead, doesn't yep. he have to come out? I think that's right, and Francis probably I think is having that same discussion. 
And now that's what's going to have to happen. Yeah. So in comes number two for Bonner Prendergast, Cam Jackson. We haven't seen much of him here today. Still an eternity to go. Rucker on the bench for the remainder of the time. Rel Davis. Corral. Great look inside, Rawls. Didn't go straight up with it, he fortunate did. to get his own rebound. Yeah, he waited a little bit there like he was like, like come and get some, and, and he did. Foster comes down with the catch, and Archbishop Carroll. They don't need to release that basketball. Rel Davis will shoot two from the line. Munir Gregg comes to the scorer's table. So who stands out to you, Huck, if it does finish this way? Who should we go talk to? Luca Foster yeah, stands out to me. Definitely. I, I think Gregg's played a good game. And, and uh, Rawls made some timely threes. Luca and Greg, you just want to make me look short. That's fine. No, no problem, Hawk. <laughs> You've been there before, Bob. That's right. Time out on the floor, an 11-point lead for Archbishop Carroll. This portion of today's game brought to you by E&M Insurance, property and casualty insurance for, firm in North Wales. So if you are looking to redo your policy, or even if you're not, just if you haven't checked it in a while, Reach out to our buddy Chris Moore, who went to LaSalle here in the Philadelphia Catholic League, class of 1989, trying to help you or your business with your insurance needs. One thing I found out the hard way, actually I wouldn't say the hard way, I was fortunate to have it, but if you haven't checked your sump pump, if you have a separate rider for water backup, check it, because if you don't have it and we're having bigger storms and basements flooding, Make sure that your insurance policy actually covers that. Chris Marr would be the guy to call in that regard. Maybe you're going to buy a house with a basement. That's where you can reach out to Jim McLaughlin and Carrie Garing Boyle of the Carrie Garing Boyle team at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. Fox and Roach Realtors helped my wife and I buy our home, and we really appreciate their sponsorship of Bob Long Sports over the years. Folks, if you like these types of games and us getting out the games and doing them for free support the businesses that are supporting high school athletics we appreciate all of their sponsorship Bonner Prendergast they got a move now down 11 with two minutes to go Francis for three little short Rel Davis brings it down we haven't seen a lot of that from Davis, but he's a pretty good rebounder for a freshman guard. Um, got a lot of rebounds this year. Uh, he sneaks in there, gets the ball off the glass, and is able to push it up floor. He's not looking to push there, obviously, up 11 with a minute 47 left. But that's a good skill set he had. He, he's, he's closing in on a, over 100 rebounds and 100 assists. You know, I go back to... Uh, when Francis came in in the game, and he really gave Bonner a jolt. Really, really gave him a jolt. And, and, and I don't think the two stars rallied around him after that and, like, caught their breath and said, all right, we're, we got the lead thanks to this kid, and, and they really never could get on track. And then it wasn't from a lack of effort. It just, it just wasn't their night. Big rebound there by Muneer Greg, and that will just about do it. Yeah, good contest there by Foster, too. Too much length for Womack to get over. Foster's played a clean game. He's, he's done a lot of things well. And they will now foul Ian Williams with a minute 23 to play. Honor season won't end, though. They will... Uh, they will being the second Catholic League uh, representative in the 5A playoffs. Yep. They'll play a district game, I guess, for seeding for the 3-4 seed, and they'll have a chance to, to you know, regroup and, uh, you know, if this if this score holds, regroup and uh, maybe do some damage in the States. Last year, they struggled in the PIAA postseason 
I think they actually lost their playing game, if that's right, because they had so many guys that were ineligible. This year, I believe just about everybody's eligible, Huck. Yeah, well, yeah, they, I think they lost to Dobbins last year um, in that game, and they were ineligible. I mean, they have two starters that are, that are trans, upperclassmen um, transfers, and last time I checked in, there was supposed to be a hearing on them. I don't know how that turned out. But, uh, you know, if, if they're there, that's great. If not, then uh, you'll see Francis and probably uh, um, Camden Jackson or Gatlin's younger brother, Conjay, uh, who, who's seen some time this year um, as a quarterback uh, for the varsity this year on the football team uh, get increased uh, minutes. Deep three, that one is good. And as if on command, we talk about Cam Jackson. He's going to be a good player. And they give it up for Munir Craig, who brings the house down. Dunk trackers approaching 300, Bob, in case you're wondering, and you're scoring at home. I think we're at the 292 coming in. 42 seconds left. Bonner, Prendergast, they're calling off the dogs. Bonner, Prendergast, they led for a lot of this first half into the third quarter. Archbishop Carroll, they took a lead for the first time since the first quarter in the final seconds of the third quarter. And never looked back. Never looked back. Archbishop Carroll, they're going to move on to play Newman Garetti. The season continues, and the kids are all right. It's the youngsters from Archbishop Carroll taking down Bonner Prendergast in the Catholic League's first Playoff game. Stay with us, folks, and we'll have post-game interviews. Go ahead, Huck. Okay, yeah, well-earned win by the, by the Patriots. <laughs> really, really played well, showed a lot of poise, um, a lot of maturity for a young team um, in those final minutes uh, of the third quarter and into the fourth quarter. Um, and, you know, they just outlasted Bonner. And uh, I'm not sure the Friars had, um, had it going all night. Uh, other than Francis coming in the game and giving them that surge, uh, you know, the, the, the seniors in the team were just a little bit off tonight, and, and it wasn't, uh, just wasn't, wasn't uh, meant to be for them. So Bob is getting a couple of the players together down there. Uh, I believe Luca Foster will be one, and Munir Gregg will be the other, and I'm sure Coach uh, talked to Coach Bell as well. Thank you, Huck. We have Luca Foster and Munir Gregg with us here. Guys, congratulations on being the first team to garner a Philadelphia Catholic League playoff win this year. How does it feel? It feels great. We came out strong. Big energy crowd was right with us. It feels great, man. It's a nice big one for us. Luca, let's start with you. The, we were counting you on the dunk tracker up there. Our buddy Huck Palmer is up there. and A couple of big time jams, a couple of big time threes. What went well for you offensively today? You know, I started off slow in the first half, but I came back in the second half, started off strong. Um, I really just took the open shots. I knew I could hit them down. I knew my teammates was going to find me. You know, the dunks I had, I knew they was, my teammates was going to find me. So there we go, yeah. And then, Manier, for you, I think back to third quarter, a couple of tough baskets where you're hitting really hard, strength to get the ball up and off the glass and in for an opportunity for a three-point play. Started to turn that momentum. Uh, I mean, when I missed the shot, I know my Drew got the board, gave it to me. I got the end when he trusted me. I trusted all my guys. I just love it, man. It was a big, good win for us. You're a young team, and everybody is talking about that, and yet you outdueled a veteran-laden, senior-laden Bonner Prendergast team. How have you guys learned to win? Now nine and two in your last Catholic, last eleven Philadelphia Catholic League games. How has this young group learned how to win? We have really just been working. You know, we've been doing a lot of drills to transition. We've been playing strong together. We really just got to adapt to the older players and be physical with them. And Manier, last one for you. So you turn around on effectively one day rest. You're going to go to South Philadelphia and take on Newman Garetti. What type of challenge would that bring? And 
Are you guys ready for it? We just need to bring a lot of energy, man. Just bring the energy, make sure we good, and we're going to get this big one. I'm winning this. Thank you so much, guys. Congrats on the win, and we'll see you down the road. Luca Foster, Manir Gregg, our guests. Thank you, guys. Hawk, back to you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, great interview down there from Bob to, to two young players, Manir Gregg and Luca Foster, were terrific tonight. As Bob said, they will go down to South Philly and play the Saints of Newman Garetti. Newman Garetti, uh, and, and I believe Carroll played in the first game, regular season game of the Catholic League this year, and it was all Newman Garetti that night. Um, but this is a little bit different Newman Garetti team. Uh, Kafik Myers, a headliner for them. Uh, St. Joe's commit, excellent player, um, MVP candidate, I, I believe, if he was there all year. Uh, was, was there at that game, but not um, won't be there this time. And, you know, um, Newman's now playing some younger kids. And uh, I, I expect Carroll to, it's going to be a tough place to go, tough place to win. Um, but Carroll's playing really well. They, they, they played a, a really good Roman team tight on the road uh, not long ago. So I expect them to get out there and, 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 have, and Coach Bo to have a good plan and, and for them to, to fight down there and, 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 and make it a game for a, for, for a long while. Huck, thanks for being with me here today, partner. Let's do it again in a couple of weeks. What do you say? I always love it, Bob. I really appreciate you uh, allowing me to be part of this. Um, you do a great job. You do a great job for, for covering sports in this area. Um, really, there's nothing better, and uh, I, I just I relish the opportunity to be part of this. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. We'll have you at the Palestra for the final. We'll also, um, at some point, have semifinals. Won't be live streamed but we'll have them up after the fact. A lot more information coming about broadcast and streaming plans for the championships. But what we do know is we're going to Warminster on Friday night. Archbishop Wood hosting Father Judge. Boy, maybe maybe the game of the quarterfinals. I don't know. There's Prep and Ryan. Certainly Carroll and Newman Garetti will be a lot of fun, yeah. but there's a lot of people looking forward to that Wood Judge game. Wood Judge is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really exciting. There's some dynamic players in that game. I love Kavar Kennedy, the point guard for Judge. A really good player. Gets up and down. And, of course, for, for Wood, you have Jalil Bethea, the McDonald's All-American, and uh, Josh Reed, who's been terrific from start start to now all year long. Just a really terrific player, really efficient Gets into the lane at will, gets to the rim at will, and, 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 and is a polished finisher. And uh, it's going to be probably an up and down affair. And it's going to be a lot of scoring, I think, I hope. And because uh, you know what that means for me a lot of stats. A lot and, of stats. Right? So uh, that's what I'll be looking forward to. And I, and I look forward to your broadcast, Bob. Well, thank you, Huck. And a pleasure working with you. Brady Joyce on the camera. Excellent. As always, get some rest, partner. And we'll see you in Warminster on Friday. The story tonight, though, is the Archbishop Carroll Patriots, the youngsters that hung in. And outlasted a senior laden Bonner Prendergast team. Onward to the quarterfinals here in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Good night, everybody, and we will talk to you on Friday.